What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Lions video and welcome back to another Detroit Lions rumors and news video. Now of course as it is the offseason news and rumors will be sprewing about this team for the next couple of weeks, next couple of months and as the news as the rumors continue to come out I will continue to make these videos and update about it and of course in just the past couple of days alone the Lions have made a couple new signs, have had a couple more rumors come out and have changed changed this football team significantly since the last update video. Now, before we get into this video, before we get into the new the two newest Detroit Lions members and some of the new contracts and some of the new rumors spreading around this Lions organization. If you are new to the channel and are enjoying this Detroit Lions content, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It takes just 2 seconds out of it to do so. It's quick, free, and easy and you will be helping the channel out more than you could know. So if you could take those 2 seconds to simply hit the like and the subscribe button i'd be greatly appreciative for it but with all that being said and without any further ado let's get into this new detroit lions news and rumors and what it means for the lions moving forward Now, starting off with the Detroit Lions signing from a day ago. Last night, the Detroit Lions made another move in the free agent market as they decided to bring in wide receiver and kick slash punt returner Khalif. Raymond. Now, Khalif Raymond will likely be the kick and punt returner for the Detroit Lions team next season. Although, as I said, he is officially listed at the wide receiver position, very similarly to what Jamal Agnew had going on a season ago. However, Khalif Raymond is a little bit more technically sound and has a lot more experience at the wide receiver position, playing it in the NFL and playing the position in general just much longer than what Jamal Agnew was able to accomplish. Now, Khalif Raymond is being brought in on a one-year small contract very similarly to every other contract the Detroit Lions have given out thus far. The last season Khalif Raymond was a very solid kick and punt returner for the Tennessee Titans. Khalif Raymond last season had 23 punt returns for 208 yards averaging 9 yards per return which actually ranked 8th in the NFL among all return men with I believe 20 plus attempts at return. So as I said average 9 yards per return ranking 8th in the NFL at that spot. He's a pretty good punt returner pretty solid at that unfortunately. Unfortunately, he has not yet taken a punt or kick return back to the house yet. However, he is very, very capable of doing so, and he has the ability, he has the speed, he has the elusiveness to do that for the Detroit Lions next season. Now, in his career, in his entirety of his career, he's been a really solid kick returner as well. As throughout his career, he has had 53 kick returns for the Tennessee Titans, totaling over 1,086 return yards, and of course, with that being the case, averaging 20.5 yards per return. Now, Khalif Raymond has been a pretty solid return man in the NFL for a while. He's been an okay depth wide receiver for a while in the NFL as well. And I'm very happy that the Lions decided to hire him. I'm very excited the Lions decided to sign him. He has a lot of potential at return man. I believe he will be competing in it as of right now. Is the front runner for the kick and punt return position for our Detroit Lions next season. I think he's going to be a real big return man. I think he's probably going to be end up being the return man for the Lions next season. However, of course, they're going to have competition at that punt return spot. They're not just going to hand this rule to him, but he is going to have a big opportunity to earn it next year. As many people believe, he is being brought in to replace Jamal Agnew. He is being brought in to kind of bring that punt and kick return game back to the Detroit Lions. They've had one of the best kick and punt returners for the past couple of years. And although I don't believe Khalif Raymond is quite on the same level as Jamal Agnew, I think he brings more on the offensive front. I think he'll be a better receiver than what Jamal Agnew was able to offer. And I don't think his return skills are going going to look that much worse than what we saw with Jamal Agnew. Now, the next piece of news that came out actually earlier today was the Detroit Lions' newest free agent signing as the Detroit Lions agreed to a one-year contract, if you could believe it, with Alex Anzalone, the linebacker formerly of the New Orleans Saints. Now, as I said, the Detroit Lions gave Alex Anzalone, the linebacker, a one-year $1.7 million contract. Again, very similar to every other contract the Lions have given out thus far. It is a one-year prove-it deal contract, small amount, small capital, small cap space wasted, or small cap space spent, but has the ability to be a very high impact and a very impactful player, which is going to either be a very good contract, 
it's going to be a very good value contract. It's going to, it's another low risk, high reward kind of a deal that the Lions are continuing to give out to player after player after player. Alex Anzalone has been a very solid linebacker in the NFL for a majority of his career. He's a four year NFL veteran being only 26 years of age going into next season. In his four years with the New Orleans Saints, Alex Anzalone has played in 38 total games for the Saints, having 123 total tackles, eight tackles for loss, four sacks, three forced fumbles, three passes defended, and an interception. Now, Alex Anzalone has always been a very solid player for the New Orleans Saints. He's always been a pretty solid linebacker, been a depth linebacker with the Saints having one of the better linebacking course in the NFL over the past couple of years. Demario Davis was there. Quan Alexander was there a season ago. There are some other guys that are there, but Alex Anzalone has gotten his shot. He's gotten his playing time, and he has actually made a lot of impact plays for the Saints over the past couple of years. The New Orleans Saints connection makes sense. Him being from New Orleans, of course, our new head coach and our defensive coordinator are both from New Orleans with with our new defensive coordinator in Aaron Glenn being from the defensive side of the Saints organization. He's definitely worked with Alex Anzalone before. He probably knows what he's getting, and I would expect the Lions defense to look at least a little bit reminiscent of what Aaron Glenn was working with and what his DBs were working in as far as defensive scheme in New Orleans. So bringing in a guy that knows that scheme, bringing in a guy that you've worked with before, you know exactly what you're getting out of him. I really like the hire from that perspective, and I think that this hire, especially the actual numbers of the deal tells me a lot about this new regime. It tells me a lot about this coaching staff. For example, when you saw Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn bringing in former Patriots, which of course is very similar to what our Detroit Lions are doing right now, right? Bringing in former New Orleans guys, bringing in former Chargers guys that, that our offensive coordinator has worked with, you know, they're bringing in guys that they're familiar with. And that is not an uncommon theme among new head coaches and new NFL regimes. However, I think there's a big difference between what the Quintricia regime was doing and what this regime is doing. Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn were giving out really big long-term contracts to guys that really didn't deserve that and guys that were aging or hadn't earned the contracts yet, right? Big V got a five-year contract. Jamie Collins got three years. To, you know, Trey Flowers got four years. You know, these are all guys that really didn't deserve long-term contracts with the Detroit Lions, but because they were Patriots, because Matt Patricia had worked with them before, he wanted to lock them up for a very, very long time. Whereas Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell are saying, yeah, I might have worked with you before. I might know what I'm getting, but just because I know what I was getting in New Orleans doesn't mean that you're going to fit in my system here. Doesn't mean you're necessarily going to play like you played in New Orleans. Doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be the same guy or bring the same potential, bring the same energy, bring the same amount of value to this team that you did in New Orleans. And from that standpoint, instead of giving a three-year contract, instead of giving a four-year contract and leaving the Detroit Lions stuck with him for three to four seasons. They're giving him a one-year contract. And this is not a guy they've never worked with before, right? Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn have worked with this guy for four seasons at this point. They know exactly what they're getting, and yet they're not treating him any differently than any other free agent that's willing to come in. They're not treating him any differently than, you know, a Tyra Williams, than a Brashad Perryman, than a Charles Harris. They're not treating him any differently from any other free agent, even though he by far has the most experience working with our new defensive coordinator and our new head coach. So from that perspective, I really like that signing as well. And I really like the way the Lions are going about signing these new players to one-year prove-it deals with low risk, with incredibly high potential and reward. The third piece of news for today's episode and the final piece of news that we'll be talking about today is the contract situation. Now, if you were unaware, the Detroit Lions have actually had two contracts be restructured within the organization with both Nick Williams and starting quarterback Jared Goff restructuring their contract to open up cap space for the Detroit Lions. Now, Nick Williams restructured, restructured his contract a few days ago, lowering his base salary from $4.1 million all the way down to just $1.25. I don't know exactly how much cap space that clears up for the Detroit Lions. I don't know if all of that goes back into our cap space. I don't know if some of that was turned into signing bonus. I don't know how that all works. I don't know the exact number of cap space that was 
cleared up by that restructuring but that did clear up a little bit of cap space for the Detroit Lions and then the big news that came out today was Jared Goff's restructuring and the restructuring of Jared Goff's contract. The Detroit Lions took $20 million that Jared Goff was owed to date and converted that into guaranteed bonus. They, they turned it into signing bonus. They turned it into guaranteed money for the starting quarterback. Now, what this means for the Detroit Lions is they're taking that $20 million that he was owed this year. And instead of it being based on performance or incentives or anything like that, they are guaranteeing him that money. But in doing so, they are pushing that money and spreading it evenly across the four years of his contract. Meaning instead of paying him 20 million this year, they will pay him 5 million this year, 5 million next year, 5 million the year after, and 5 million the year after that. It clears up for the Detroit Lions over $15 million in cap space to go out and use. And I think the Lions are very realistically and very likely to go make a big move in free agency. I mean, as Brad Holmes, you don't clear up $15 million this year just to not do anything with it, right? Obviously, you got to save some money for the rookies. Obviously, you got to save some money for the draft class, but you don't don't save up 15 million. You don't get back 15 million dollars from your franchise quarterback if you don't want to, if you don't plan to do anything with it. I think Brad Holmes is looking to make a big move. I think he's looking to make a splash. And obviously, depending on what that splash is, it's going to dictate whether it I believe is the right move or not. And unfortunately, I don't want the Lions necessarily to, I don't want the Lions to necessarily make the big splashy move, but it does seem like Brad Holmes has something planned. And as I said, you don't clear up 15 million dollars just to not use it. You clear up that money because you have an idea of guys that you want to continue to bring it and guys that you want to bring them back into this organization or guys that you want to integrate into your new football team. I think the Lions are working on something big. I think the Lions have a big signing in the works and I think they're going to be, get a big time free agent to come to the Motor City and join this new look Lions team. Now, but the last part of the video today is the rumors part of the video. And these aren't necessarily rumors, but there are more future events that could still happen and future events that may happen within the Lions organization. Now, the Detroit Lions were set to host both DeMonte Kazi today as well as safety J. Ron Kirk. Both of these safeties, I think, could realistically end up becoming Detroit Lions. J. Ron Kirst was here a season ago, was actually cut at the end of the season, and now the Lions are looking to bring him back. I thought J. Ron played very well last year. I thought he was one of our better safeties and one of our defensive players in general. I was super happy with this signing a year ago, and I would be incredibly happy with the signing and re-signing of him yet again. And as I mentioned before, DeMonte Kazi would also be a very, very beneficial player to add to this Lions team. With all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. That was the Detroit Lions news and rumors for this week. A lot has changed in the past couple of days. The Lions have two new members. The Lions have restructured two more contracts and opened up a significant amount of cap space if they are looking to go sign new free agents or a big, splashy free agent signing. Now, with all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. Thank, let me know down in the comments below what you think about this Lions news and what you think about these Lions rumors. Let me know what you think about the Jared Goff cap situation situation and the restructuring of his contract. But with all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching the video. If there's more Lions news before tomorrow, then I will obviously make a video letting every single person know. But until then, that's all I got for you guys right now. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow with more Lions news. But until then, that's all I got for you guys right now. And as always, go Lions!